What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video. And today we're going to be talking about peripheral devices. So in this video, you will be learning about how to set up, um, set up and install common peripheral devices to laptops, PCs, uh, devices such as printers, scanners, keyboards, etc. In addition to learning about various installation types. All right. So devices, as you begin your IT career, you will soon discover that you will be called upon to install a variety of peripheral devices on either laptops or desktops. In the following sections, you will learn what to expect when called upon. So let's talk about printers. So a printer is a peripheral device which makes a persistent representation of graphics and or text, usually on paper. Printers, including multifunctional devices such as printers that can print, scan, copy, and send out faxes, they require specific drivers to be installed before the device is connected to enable full use of device features. Some operating systems like Microsoft Windows or Apple's Mac OS systems may have drivers to popular printers already pre-installed, but you may come across cases where the printer is outdated and the drivers to operate them may need to be manually installed in order for the printer to fully function. Next, we have a scanner. A scanner is um, an image, excuse me, a scanning, a scanner is a device that optically scans images, printed text, handwriting, or an object, and converts it into a digital signal. Next, we have a keyboard. A keyboard is one of the primary input devices used with a computer. Similar to an electric typewriter, a keyboard is composed of buttons that create letters, numbers, and symbols, as well as perform other functions. A standard keyboard, unlike a printer, scanner, or other multifunction device, these things are considered to be plug and play devices, meaning that it is automatically recognized by the operating system. Next, we have a mouse. A computer mouse is a handheld hardware input device that controls a cursor in the GUI or the graphical user interface and can move and select text, icons, files and folders on your computer. A standard mouse is also a plug and play device as well. Next, we have cameras. Two types of cameras can be added to a desktop or a laptop. You have webcams, which is a camera that connects to a computer. It captures either still pictures or motion video. And with the aid of software, it can transmit its video on the Internet in real time. And then you have a digital camera, which can use the desktop or laptop as a permanent storage location for photos or videos that have already been taken. And both types of cameras, they connect via a USB port. Next, we have external hard drives. An external hard drive is a storage device located outside of a computer that is connected through a USB cable or a wireless connection. An external hard drive is usually used to store media that a user needs to be portable for backups and when the internal drive of the computer is already at its full memory capacity. In most cases, the operating system will recognize an external hard drive and install it as soon as you plug it into the USB port. For maximum speed with the USB 3.0 or a uh, 3.1 generation one drive, it is recommended that you plug it into a USB 3.0 or faster port. Speakers. So computer speakers can be connected in one of several ways to a PC, depending upon the computer. You have the 3.5 millimeter jack, also known as a mini jack. You have an HDMI connection and you have a S slash PDIF connection. Most desktop computers use integrated sound, but some use a sound card for higher quality sound. The 3.5 millimeter jack. This is the most common method uh, for connecting speakers to a computer. Uh, the color coding commonly used for 3.5 millimeter jacks is as follows. So you have a light blue uh, color tip on the jack that will represent the line in. That means sound is going in to the computer. 
So you have the lime green that is normally uh, the tip that will be associated with that of headphones or a speaker, which indicates that sound is traveling out of the computer. And then you have pink. That'll be a tip on the wire that you will plug in that is normally used for microphone connections. Now, some systems add the following to provide support for 5.1 and 7.1 surround audio. So you will have a black connection, which will um, allow for you to connect to a rear speaker, an orange connection, which will allow for you to connect a uh, center or a subwoofer. And then you have a silver connection, which will allow for you to, to connect side stereo. So just think of your surround sound system. Next, we have HDMI connections. So an HDMI cable transmits digital audio as well as HD video. Thus, the HDMI port can run speakers uh, built into an HD TV or a home theater receiver. So it can transmit sound to HD TVs and home theaters. Then we have the SPDIF that stands for Sony Philips Digital Interface. And you'll typically find this on older PCs. These things can transmit digital audio to HD TVs or receivers that have the appropriate ports. Let's talk about connecting uh, displays. So when you're going to connect the display, you have a, a few options to pick from. You can use a VGA. The VGA port uses a heavy cable that is normally attached with thumb screws. And that is what the cable looks like and its uh, connector. You have uh, DVI. So the DVI port, that is available in two variations or three variations. You have DVI-A, which only transmits uh, analog signals. DVI-D, which uh, deals with digital signals only. And then you have DVI-I, which deals with digital and analog signals. And the DVI, it can be adapted to a VGA. Now, the connector is larger than the VGA, but like the VGA, uh, the DVI has to be installed using thumb screws or secured using thumb screws. Now we have connecting an HDMI and a display port. So HDMI and display ports and their reduced size versions, they do not require screws as the cables and connectors are smaller and lighter than VGAs and DMIs. So essentially you just plug them in like you do a USB cord. Let's talk about configuring multiple displays. So most video cards and systems with built-in video can use two or more displays at the same time. The user can select which display is primary and which one is used as the extended desktop or whether to duplicate the primary display. The user can also select the desired resolution for each display. And when it's in extended mode, they can drag different programs to each display. The configuration process is performed through the operating system. So on the screen here, you'll be looking at a Windows 10. If you were to go into the settings and go to display, this will give you the options to manipulate how you want to use your screens and how you want to drag your mouse across from your laptop to your extended screen, or if you want to mirror both screens or, you know, pretty much whatever it is that you want to do for the most part when it comes to setting up your screens. Let's talk about various installation types. So in this section, we're going to talk about installing devices and helping you to understand each method that will be covered in the IT fundamentals exam. So the first method is the plug and play versus the driver installation. So plug and play, which is sometimes abbreviated PMP, is a catchy phrase used to describe devices that work with a computer system as soon as they are connected. The user does not have to manually install drivers for the device or even tell the, the uh, computer that a new device has been added. Instead, the computer automatically recognizes the device, loads the new drivers for the hardware if needed, and begins to work with the newly connected device. Mass storage, keyboards, and mice generally use plug-and-play installation. 
Now, if a device cannot be recognized by the operating system because the operating system lacks the correct drivers, then the drivers must be manually installed. Depending upon the device, the drivers may be installed before the device is connected or after the device is connected. After a device that requires drivers is installed with the correct drivers, the device is then treated as plug and play when it is reconnected to the device. So here is a screenshot of a device manager, and this is where you would go to update drivers uh, in, uh, or in uninstall drivers for those drivers that are not automatically recognized by the computer, or if they are recognized, you can update them from here as well. And here are some other steps required. So when printers, scanners, or multifunction devices are installed, the user is often prompted to connect the, de connect the device and turn it on to complete the installation process. If the device is located on a network rather than being plugged into a computer, the installation program may prompt the user to browse for the correct device. When the device is bundled with apps, the installation process may prompt the user to select uh, which to install or just install all of the bundled apps. Then we have IP based peripherals. So many peripherals today are used on the Internet protocol, also known as IP, meaning in order for these devices to function, they must be connected to a local area network, also known as a LAN, or they have to be connected to the Internet. Examples of IP based peripherals are wireless access points, wireless routers, IP security cameras, network print servers, network printers or other multifunction devices. Depending upon the device, configuring the device for an IP connection might be performed through a touch panel via a setup program or via the device's embedded web browser. Devices that are managed through an embedded web browser are using web-based configuration. So here are the steps to go about setting up a device through web-based configuration. So the first step would be you will look up the IP address and login information for the device. Step two, after connecting the device to the network and powering it on, you would open your web browser and navigate to the device's IP address. Step three, you will enter the username and password to gain access to the device. Then at this point, you can begin the management process. Now, it is highly recommended that you screen capture any changes that you may make so that you can have a point of reference to go back to in case something goes wrong. And also the most common web based um, configuration, uh, the most common web based device that you're going to be more than likely using is going to be a, a router. Uh, network router, home network router. So most, oftentimes when you get a router, whether it's from your cable company or you just buy one on your own, they're going to tell you, hey, you need to go log into this website and then you can go ahead and set up all the settings for your router to make it to make your network secure or make your network function. All right, so that is our quick class. So let's go ahead and get into some check on learning. So the first question is, you are connecting a PC to an HDTV. Which of the following connections will provide digital audio? Will it be a VGA connection? Will it be a DVID connection? Will it be a SPDIF connection? Or will it be a DVI-I connection? So you're connected from a PC to an HDTV. Which of these connections will provide digital audio? The correct answer would be SPDIF. And remember that stands for Sony Philips Digital Interface. So VGA only deals with analog signals. DVID deals with digital signals only. DVI-I deals with digital and analog signals, but this question is asking specifically about digital audio signals. And if you recall, SPDIF is a connection that uh, is a wire that was created strictly for the purpose of transmitting digital audio signals to HDTVs from PCs. 
Next question. Your client has recently switched from Windows to Mac. When the client connects his digital camera to the Mac laptop and turns on the camera, what happens? Is it nothing happens? Is it the client must select what to do? Is it the import process opens? Or is it the client must install the driver for the camera? So you switch from Windows to Mac. You hook your digital camera up. What do you think is about to happen next? The correct answer is the import process opens. And why this happens is because if you recall, most Mac computers are already preloaded with drivers. So that means any relatively new camera for the most part, especially one within the last five years or so, or five to 10 years, if you plug that thing into your MacBook, it's going to your MacBook is going to automatically recognize that camera. It's going to recognize the driver associated with that camera. And it's going to begin the process of opening up the windows to let you begin importing images or videos off of that camera. So it's essentially it's plug and play. All right. Final question. The documentation for a new device states that it has a default IP address of 192.168.1.1. This device uses which type of setup? Would it be an IP-based setup? Would it be a driver-based setup? Would it be a web-based setup? Or would it be a plug-and-play setup? So you have a brand new device that needs to be configured and it provides you this IP address. Which type of setup are you going to use? The correct answer would be this is a web-based setup. If you go back to the question here, this question is telling you that you need to go to the web address 192.168.1.1, and that will get you direct access to this device via a web browser so that you can begin the management process for that device. All right, so in summary, we have discussed common peripheral devices such as printers, scanners, and keyboards. And we also discussed various installation types. Now, if you want more information on this, please visit my website, technologyg.com, so you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you prepare for your CompTIA IT Fundamentals examination. And until next video, peace.